By now, you've probably heard of ChatGPT, but if you're not familiar with what it is, allow me to explain. ChatGPT is an AI language model created by OpenAI. It's designed to understand and generate human-like text based on the input it receives. It's used for tasks like answering questions, writing essays, translating languages, and even creating poetry. In fact, every word that I use to explain what ChatGPT is came from me typing into ChatGPT this. Imagine I'm in an elevator with someone and they ask me what ChatGPT is. I have less than 20 seconds to explain it to them. What do I tell them? And what's really wild is that ChatGPT actually passed the USMLE. Yes, the same medical licensing exam that I took in order to become a doctor. And if you're not familiar with this exam, the questions that they ask come in the form of a clinical vignette, which means that they're asking questions as if a patient is coming to you as a doctor and you have to figure out the solution for their problem. Does that mean that artificial intelligence and ChatGPT are going to replace doctors? While AI like ChatGPT can assist in certain tasks within the medical field, it's unlikely they'll replace doctors entirely. AI can help analyze data, suggest diagnoses, and provide treatment options, which can improve efficiency and accuracy. However, the human elements of medicine, empathy, ethical decision-making, patient communication, and hands-on procedures are beyond AI's capabilities. It's more likely AI will become a tool doctors use, not a replacement. So what's really cool is that AI and ChatGPT can help doctors make a diagnosis, but also guide them in making treatment decisions. All right, let's try another real life medical case. So my patient, it took multiple doctors to eventually figure out what he had, but at first no one could diagnose him. So let's see how ChatGPT handles this. I am a doctor. My patient was hunting a rabbit and he saw that the muscle was necrotic when he cut it open. He decided to freeze the meat and eat it later. He then cooked the rabbit a year later. He cooked it on the stovetop and inhaled some of the smoke during the cooking process. A few weeks later, he developed a fever, malaise, and some shortness of breath. He was found to have a pleural effusion, meaning fluid that's developed around the lung. Now that pleural effusion, when we tested it, it became, well, it showed that the type of white blood cell that was in that fluid was mostly lymphocytes. So lymphocytes is a type of white blood cell. And so we call that a lymphocytic predominant pleural effusion. What is the most likely diagnosis? Whoa, the scenario you're describing is quite specific and points towards a rare condition known as tularemia, which is caused by the bacterium Francisella tularensis. This bacterium can survive for long periods in the environment, including in animal carcasses. Tularemia is often spread through contact with infected animals like rabbits. The inhalation form of the disease, which can occur when bacteria laden dust or aerosols are inhaled, can cause a severe pneumonia when that happens, but also pleural effusion and systemic symptoms like fever and malaise. This is incredible because it literally, I gave that scenario to the chat GPT and it just spit it out right away. It took us a, a couple of weeks to figure out the diagnosis. So in this instance, what I would do is, okay, you get the patient, they come in, they tell you their story, you examine them, you do the labs and all that. And then you could run this into chat GPT and it's like, hmm, I think I got your diagnosis, sir, in a couple hours after all that. But in real life, it took us a couple weeks. So in real life, we ended up getting antibodies and they were positive for tularemia. So the antibodies in conjunction with everything else is what made us, uh, allowed us to make the diagnosis. I see this right away. I put into chat GBT and this is what it suggests. So then I'd be like, okay, I should go check the antibodies now. And then there you go, there's your diagnosis. So this is incredible. I mean, the artificial intelligence can absolutely help doctors make diagnoses as well as guide treatment decisions and overall patient management. So it's really fascinating uh, what this can do for people. And this is just one aspect of what ChatGPT can do, let alone all the non-health stuff. I think it's you know really game-changing in terms of helping people. Of course, there's lots of pros and cons to artificial intelligence, and I'm not going to go into that. But in terms of you know, using it for this purpose, it's fantastic.